So here's how it happens, right? First, you get arrested. Big, big shocker. And, and it's everywhere. It's all over the social media, the news, everything. You get arrested. Then the charges are released. And everybody starts seeing, okay, what this person was charged with. Whoa, wow, whoa. Then the accusations start coming out. And then you're like, wait a minute, slow down, slow down. What is going on here, right? And then you sift through everything and you start looking at this person. Then you start going back through all the old interviews, video clips, and everything to see if the signs were there. And it's cringeworthy, the stuff that you start seeing. And when you start connecting the dots and putting everything and piecing everything together, you start saying, like, oh, it was in front of our face the entire time. And we didn't notice it. That's what I think is going on here with Diddy. That's the perfect way to lay it out. We're going to check out right now some of the 10 disturbing Diddy interviews because of what we know now. Let's check it out. We know sometimes those relationships get ugly, you know, and sometimes it doesn't come out into the forefront the way this one has come out. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're rewinding several interviews that retroactively left us asking, what did Diddy say? You're going to hear about my party. They're going to be shutting them down. They're going to probably be arresting me, doing all types of crazy things just because we want to have a good time. Representing the Wendy Williams Show. After Hot 97 fired Wendy Williams in 1998, she accused Sean P. Diddy Combs of using his money and influence to, quote, try to crush her in New York. Almost two decades after their beef started, Williams welcomed Diddy onto her talk show, seemingly on good terms. I know I pissed a lot of people off, including you. Mm -hmm. But this is a full circle moment, yes, everybody. Yes. Get into adult yeah. conversation. Now, if you know Wendy Williams, and I didn't really come up on Wendy Williams like that, grow up listening to her, but everybody you hear her uh, hear speak about her talks about how she was on Diddy and calling him out for a long time. Like, she was one of them ones that was always calling him out. Everybody said it was Wendy Williams from the jump, but I didn't really listen to her like that growing up or anything like that. Knew of her and the controversy and different things that she spewed, but Everybody you hear talk about it say, yo, she was on to Diddy early. But this is a full circle moment, yes, everybody. Yes. Get into adult yeah. conversation. Yeah, this yeah. Full circle. Yeah, 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 yeah. While Diddy presents himself as someone who's matured into a role model, several moments are now traced with irony. Williams inquires about Diddy's lifestyle and the people he surrounds himself with, asking if they, quote, violate him. She meant financially, but her phrasing proved prognostic. You mm -hmm. threw a house party and I got the <laughs> footage, okay? <laughs> Look at this. Now, who has this many people at their house? Puff and, uh, or Sean, Diddy, Duty, what do I call you? <laughs> Diddy later discusses setting a positive example for African-American males and his charter school capital prep. Diddy's partnership with the school unsurprisingly ended in November 2023. A sexual assault accusation surfaced. Our children are expected not just to learn to read, write, and compute, but to use that which they've learned to improve their community. Defending just... How did that get swept under the rug? Did y'all know about that? I didn't hear about that. I'm just now hearing about that. You see how... That's what we, that's what we say about powerful people, right? People who have a ton of influence because of their celebrity status or how much money they make. They have the ability to suppress a lot of things that otherwise would have been plastered everywhere. And it probably wasn't. I just was under a rock, but I didn't hear about that. Did you? Justin Bieber, Access Hollywood. The allegations against Diddy have made people reassess his relationships with several young protégés, including Justin Bieber. Diddy's 48 hours with Bieber in particular isn't as cool as it seemed in 2009. Where we hanging out and what we doing, um, we, we can't really disclose but um, it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream. Although Diddy is in trouble with the law now, the positions were reversed in 2014 when Bieber got arrested for a DUI. Diddy defended Bieber in an Access Hollywood interview. He acknowledged that the pop star had made mistakes, but Diddy vowed to help him stay, quote, on the right track. Well, I, I, I don't think that he um, should, should be judged like he's not a human being or he's not a teenager that has to 
hit some stumbling blocks. You know what I'm saying? It's just not fair to, to make him a perfect human being. Fast forward almost a decade, Bieber's arrest feels innocent compared to Combs's. Bieber wasn't as quick to rush to Diddy's defense. A source claims that Bieber doesn't want to focus on Diddy's scandal, instead dedicating his time to being, quote, a great dad and husband. Does he want to have, you know, any affiliation with any of this? No. But I think that even for him, where he is in his life right now, I think it is a smart thing for him to just not even get involved in anything. Keep JLo's name out your mouth. Now, I ain't gonna lie, I saw a couple of those Justin Bieber clips, bro. And they almost bring like a tear to your eye when you look at them and, and you see because your mind is wondering. And then you're hearing all of the outside noise of people saying what they're saying about him and Justin's situation and 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 their opinions about it. You hear that and you look at some of those videos and you say, man, I hope not. Because I was sitting there telling somebody, I was like, if all of the allegations that they're saying with Justin Bieber, if Justin comes out and says anything about that or addresses that or, or confirms that it's some it's true or some of it's true, oh, it's over for him. It'd be over for Diddy. Do you know what I mean? If Justin sits down and has an interview and pff, it'll be bad for him. I, I just feel like I feel like that'll be like. That, that'll be like the nail in the coffin, to be honest with you, in my opinion. Jimmy Kimmel Live. In late 2023, shortly before Cassie Ventura filed her lawsuit against Diddy, the rapper sat down with Jimmy Kimmel. The host asked about a rumor circulating amid the release of Jada Pinkett Smith's memoir, Worthy. According to somebody claiming to be Diddy's former security guard, Will and Jada wanted to have a threesome with Jennifer Lopez. Diddy was dating Lopez at the time allegedly threatening to beat up Will Smith. Hearing Kimmel relay this tale, Diddy initially responded with a stone-cold stare. He quickly changed his tune, laughing it off and denying such gossip. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, Jimmy, I thought we was friends. What is this? <laughs> Whether or not this story is completely fabricated, it's far from the most shocking thing Diddy has been accused of. It isn't the most bonkers story involving Will and Jada either. No, it's all about no, love, though. That's no, not true. You you really heard that? No. What? Yeah, yeah. Hands to yourself, Diddy. The Keenan Ivory weigh-in show. In the past, if you had P. Diddy and Mike Tyson in the same room, chances are we'd be more intimidated by the heavyweight champion. Now we'd be more concerned for Tyson's well-being. In 1998, the two appeared on Keenan Ivory Wayans short-lived talk show. If you're curious about the pairing, the boxer wanted to start a music company. People have been helping me out. Um, Wyclef helped me out. Devontae Swing been helping me out. And hopefully Puffy helped me out, you know. <laughs> While much of the interview feels casual, a blink and you'll miss it dose of awkwardness occurs as Diddy's hand gets a little too close to Tyson. Wearing a grin, Tyson removes Diddy's hand before scooching away. But it was like, I, I just felt I was embarrassed for like weeks. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it truly is about the Benjamin, as we see. <laughs> oh yes, he's, he's glittering. It's truly is about the Benjamin. Perhaps we're reading too much into this gesture, but to say that Diddy has been accused of invading personal space would be an understatement. Watching this makes us almost as uncomfortable as Tyson. What are we doing, man? Let's talk about this guy. Yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about... Now, this one I think is sort of a reach. I think this one is a reach. And because we're gonna be honest here. We ain't gonna just just call just say stuff just to say stuff just to get no. I don't I think this one is a reach because come on. When have we in all the interviews we've seen with Mike Tyson, when has he ever held back? He's called out reporters, all kind of things in the middle of interviews if he felt some type of way. And then asked him, so now what? What you wanna do about it? So if he, if Tyson would have felt uncomfortable in at this stage of his life, I don't think Tyson would have held back and be like, yo, move your hand. Fam, you too close. I don't see that happening with Tyson, bro. I, that, that, no, that's not the type. No, no, I, I don't see that. Even if he did want Puff to work with him and, and help him launch a, a, a record label or whatever, I still don't see Tyson doing that. Come on now, this, this is Tyson we talking about. 73 Questions with Sean Diddy Combs, Vogue. Vogue's 73 Questions series allows viewers to connect with celebrities on a more personal level. Admittedly, a lot of these interviews are presented through a rose-tinted lens. 
Nowhere is that more apparent than in Diddy's interview. Love, how do you describe yourself? Uh, I'm vivacious, eccentric, and I'm a Scorpio. In 2017, the video presents Diddy in a down-to-earth light. On the heels of his 2024 arrest, though, some of Diddy's responses feel like setups for punchlines that late night hosts would have a field day with. Now, you've gone on the record saying that your white party is up there with the top three that you've ever thrown for people. What are the other two? I would say when I got my star on Hollywood, I had a party and this year at Burning Man at an undisclosed location. To name a few, Diddy describes himself as, quote, eccentric, says that there are, quote, no misconceptions about him, and claims, quote, compassion is his best personal trait. Diddy also brings up love several times, even asking the interviewer to refer to him by that name. Oh, and his dream collaboration would be with Michael Jackson. Why? I mean, it's My Michael Jackson, man. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't? The Princes and Puffy, The Graham Norton Show. Many famous names have quote-unquote partied with Diddy over the years. Not every invitee showed up, however. In 2011, Graham Norton asked about a rumor that Diddy wanted Princes William and Harry to attend one of his parties. Diddy assured Norton that they were no longer on the list. Not anymore. I mean, before, you know... <laughs> yeah, don't, don't ruin our royal no, yeah, wedding yeah, for I'm, us. I'm not... <laughs> Trust me, they're off the list. This was seemingly because William was about to marry Catherine Middleton, but Diddy's clumsy word choice turned this clip into certified cringe. Diddy claimed that he wanted to party with the princes when they were, quote, young bucks growing up. I can just go over for some tea or something and we could kick it. Since the princes had something of a reputation for getting into trouble, Diddy thought they'd, quote, want to hang out. Given what allegedly went down at numerous puffy parties, Diddy might have felt more at home with Prince Andrew. Going to um, Jeffrey's was not about partying. Absolutely not. Any interviews with Cassie. Throughout their relationship, Diddy and Cassie Ventura accompanied each other to... This makes me cringe. This makes me cringe so much, bro. And I'm going to tell you why. Seeing that video, that hotel footage of what he did to her... And, and now retroactively going back and looking at these clips and clips like that and seeing how she's, she's sitting there smiling and you're, I'm sitting here wondering like what happened beforehand? Is she smiling? Is, is this just her trying to keep from crying? She's trying hard to just put this, this facade, this, you know what I mean? Carry out the charade, just. Like, oh my God, my mind's just looking at her and I just feel so bad for her, man. So bad. So, so bad for Cassie, bro. That video, man, that, vi that video hurt me so bad to see that happen to her, man. And, and I just, my heart just continues to go out to her, man. Imagine somebody you thinking is in a happy relationship is not and don't know what to do or how to get out of it. And you looking at him, and you're thinking of him, beautiful girl on his arms. He got everything, man. This is the picture perfect. Like, you you thinking this is what you strive to have. And the whole time, what's going on behind the scenes is happening. This is, oh, bro, this is so cringe to me. Various red carpet events, even when flying solo, Diddy and Cassie would often speak adoringly of each other. Yeah. Um, the birthday party was incredible. Um, you know, um, she's such a special person. On the surface, the two looked like the epitome of a glamorous couple. That illusion was shattered when Cassie sued Combs for a, quote, cycle of abuse, violence, and sex trafficking that allegedly lasted almost a decade. If I'm on her uh, team as her attorney, I'm making it clear that that's what happened here that the relationship started out good, but gradually it got worse and worse to the point that she was caught in this vicious cycle. Uh, she was caught under his thumb. Some of Cassie's claims were supported by video evidence. After watching this footage, it's impossible to look back on any of their interviews together the same way again. The most disheartening example may have been at the 2018 Met Gala, where Liza Koshy asked Cassie if there was anything she'd like to confess. I keep everything right here. There you go. Or right here. <laughs> there you go. That's how you do it. Cassie wouldn't keep quiet much longer. Bro, you just want to grab Cassie and just hug her and say, man, we wish we would have known. We sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wish we'd have known. 
Wish we'd have known. We'd have got some help for you. And I always say we would have got you some help. I don't never say, and, and that's just a personal thing for me, because I never interfere in people's situation or relationships. And a lot of people be like, dang, L, so if you see somebody getting into it or doing something, you're not going to step in? No, I'm not. And I'm going to tell you why. I've done that before. And the person ended up going right back to the person. So imagine me stepping in and intervening and doing something, ending up in jail for however many long, uh, however many years or the rest of your life, just for that person to go back to that person and you ruined your life. I've been in that situation before. So that's why I always say we will get you some help. We will contact the authorities and send them over there. I'm not intervening. I've been in that situation before, and I vow to never do that again. Chris Brown, Rihanna, and Diddy too. The Ellen DeGeneres Show. Few could have predicted that P. Diddy and Ellen DeGeneres would both be problematic figures by 2024. Diddy dropped by DeGeneres' show multiple times. Puffy parties were a popular topic. Ellen even invited him to one of her parties. You know I have to arrive fashionably late. All right. Not too late, though. Not too late? Not too late, what please. What time would you like me to? Um, I'll tell you later. Okay. But oh, not okay. too late. Because, because you know, once you get there, the party really starts. In an especially unsettling interview from 2009, DeGeneres asked Diddy about Rihanna and Chris Brown, the latter of whom had been accused of domestic violence. Diddy reportedly lent Brown his Miami mansion, supposedly attempting to help reconcile his relationship with Rihanna. If I could be there as a friend during hard times, mm -hmm. then I'm going to be there as a friend. Right. But I don't know the exact particulars. I didn't get into it. I'm not going to do this or do that. It, it was a dark, it's a dark time for them, and I was there more as a support. Diddy didn't deny these claims, saying that he could lend his house to whoever he wanted. While Diddy condemned violence, he argued that stones shouldn't be thrown without all the facts. Unlike Diddy, Brown notably pleaded guilty to his assault charges. From there, I said, you know what, I'm going to just take everything and like it come. My consequences for my actions have to be dealt with. Lock the doors. Late night with Conan O'Brien. Between Danny Masterson and P. Diddy, celebs should be careful what they tell Conan O'Brien. It may come back to haunt them years later. In Diddy's case, Conan spoke with the rapper in 2002. Now, what are you, you're legendary for the parties that you throw. Mm -hmm. You throw a great party. I'm a legend, baby, for a whole bunch of things. O'Brien wanted to learn the key to throwing a puffy party. Diddy provided a detailed list that included beautiful ladies, beautiful men, booze, water, and, quote, locks on the doors. Conan brought the interview to a brief halt, questioning if Diddy's parties were safe. No, no, I wasn't saying, no, it was a new, it was a new Sean, party. you're in my house now, know, you I see. Please. He stumbled into my please, house. Please, It's no. okay. It's going to be fine. Okay, cool. Let me just, please let me finish. Okay. Diddy admitted that the locks were a little, quote, kinky, although there might be another word for it. Maybe Diddy intended this as a joke, but considering everything that's been reported about his parties as of late, this answer comes off as brutally honest. Um, you know, everybody gets a little bit more comfortable and loose. Builds up a nice, nice little sweat. <laughs> that just sounds disgusting. What are you doing? <laughs> Depends on the way you look at it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Puffy's Party Premonition, Entertainment Tonight. In 2001, Diddy spoke with Entertainment Tonight about his gun trial, calling it, quote, a scary situation. You know, 12 people who uh, um, hold the fate of your life. Um, but, you know, I put it in God's hands. Two years earlier, Diddy gave another interview that foreshadowed his current legal situation. Diddy claimed he couldn't get a permit for his parties, although this wouldn't stop him from throwing them. He suspected that eventually the authorities would arrest him for trying to, quote, have a good time. Whenever you bring up a different element into people's environment, things that broaden people's horizon, people get intimidated. There's a lot of people out there that feel intimidated by it. 25 years after this interview, Diddy was charged with several serious crimes. This includes sex trafficking, which extends to his alleged freak-off parties. He's seen in this video entering the Park Hyatt Hotel in Midtown Manhattan with others when agents from Homeland Security Investigations approach and separate him. Combs has pleaded not guilty, and time will only tell if the verdict will be in his favor. Given the toll the scandal has already taken on his reputation, though, 
the party may be over for good. Beyond what the people know about, all of the extra stuff that people don't even know about, or people that are close to you don't even know about, and it just sometimes, it just feels like, you know, you, you want to give up. What do you think is Diddy's most notorious interview? Let us know in the comments. Who's the person that's number one on that invitation list? Leonardo DiCaprio. Listen, it's not just the celebrity, bro. It's the athletes too, bro. These athletes, what is going on right now? Check out this. Countless legal problems, half a year in prison, and a bank account holding less than $7. Sadly, Ronaldinho's golden retirement has instead been a total train wreck. He was worth $90 million when he retired in 2015, although despite having a salary of nearly 300 k per week, Ronaldinho showed through a Coca-Cola sponsorship he was absolutely atrocious at handling his money. Coke paid him $750k per year under one condition, The whilst in public hit only drink their beverage. Well, just a couple of months after signing the deal, Ronaldinho instead promoted Coke's biggest competitor. The Coca-Cola ambassador shot himself in the foot when he rocked up to a press conference sipping on a can of Pepsi. As Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. How do you fumble that? How do you drop that bag? Come on. As a result, Coke dropped him and stated the sponsorship had become embarrassing, assisted by Ronaldinho's poor performances on the pitch as he'd become more interested in throwing wild parties. In one example, he was scheduled to play against Man United, but instead the night before, partied in a bar until 3am. A Barcelona board member added, Ronaldinho plays bongos until 2 in the morning every night. Everyone knows we have a discipline problem. Ronaldinho's getting getting older, partying all the time. How do we stop it? Well, stopping Ronaldinho's partying was basically impossible as he even negotiated a nightclub clause into one of his contracts, allowing him to party at least two nights per week. Incredibly, he wound up breaking the contract as two nights of partying simply wasn't enough, justifying his actions by stating, a football player has to have a normal life, as a person and as a sportsman. But according to his teammate Jerome Leroy, Roy, this lifestyle was seriously hurting his skills. Ronaldinho didn't train any day of the week and would just turn up on a Friday for the game on Saturday. I think he was trying to follow in the steps of Romario, who would also go out every night, but he didn't have the same success. Without a consistent training regimen, Ronaldinho began to experience constant injuries. Beginning in March 2008, he was off the field for one full year, missing 30 different games, coming from from four different injuries. In the meantime, Ronaldinho started gaining weight, for which he was clowned on by the media. One article wrote, over the past year, Ronaldinho hasn't looked like the player who led Barcelona to two straight league titles. Another- Come on, man. I hate to see this type of stuff, bro. Especially with people you like, man, was given. You, you, you had every opportunity, bro. Blessed with talents and everything that, that most people would, would just- Die to have, bro. You have that. Like, come on, man. You got to keep the main thing the main thing. Them parties? Bro, come on. Especially in a... In a you can do that after your career is over. Where is everybody going? I, I don't understand that. Like, and who did he have around him to which that... We say that sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't matter who you have around you. You're still going to make the, the worst decision, so article mentioned the former best player in the universe has already become an increasingly distant memory for the Brazilian national team and true or not gets frequently described as past it without much debate. In 2002 Ronaldinho helped carry Brazil to a World Cup win but by 2010 he wasn't even chosen to play on the team at all. Understandably Ronaldinho wasn't happy believing he was now better than ever stating I am back now to how 
I was. In fact, I think I'm even stronger now. Everything seems easier now. I want to play in a further two World Cups. His harsh World Cup rejection forced Ronaldinho to get back into shape. A forum post from 2012 titled, Ronaldinho goes back to 2004 05 weight, explained apparently he's now gone back to his ideal weight of 80 kilos. On top of this, a Gold.com article proclaimed, Ronaldinho is officially back among the world's best, although as you might expect, this didn't last long. Throughout 2013, Ronaldinho missed another 24 games, resulting from two separate injuries. He therefore again wasn't selected for Brazil's 2014 World Cup team, and by 2015 at the age of 35, Ronaldinho's career was pretty much finished. He'd signed an 18-month contract with Fluminense, although after failing to score in nine games and being booed by his own fans during a league game, Ronaldinho's contract was terminated after only two months, the club publicly announced. We were straight with him and told him it wouldn't work for us, so we decided releasing him was the right thing to do. We are somewhat frustrated. When he arrived, we expected he could do for us what he did for so many other clubs. That's what you think when you sign a player. He didn't do well in Mexico, but we took our chances by bringing him back to Rio, thinking he would do well again. Ronaldinho clearly didn't, but he now had $90 million to retire very comfortably. He'd hire his brother Roberto to be his manager, who confirmed Ronaldinho's retirement, stating, he has stopped, it is ended. Let's do something pretty big and nice after the Russia World Cup, where Ronaldinho was spotted looking extremely happy. Behind the scenes, however, his life had already begun to fall apart. Ronaldinho used his earnings to purchase 57 properties, one of which being a lake house in the riverside city of Porto Alegre. From the house, he built a wharf and dock without realizing it was totally illegal. As a result, he was fined 1.7 million US dollars, although Ronaldinho refused to pay. It was then revealed he also owed a further $2 million in unpaid property taxes, and as a result, Ronaldinho has had 57 properties seized and his Brazilian and Spanish passports confiscated over unpaid taxes and fines. Ah! That's all you can pretty much say is ah! As you're watching the money just slip through your fingers and go out the door and you're trying your best to reel it back in, but it's just, man. Ah, bro, what is going on? 57 properties seized? Oh, bro, my heart wouldn't be able to take that. Ronaldinho haggled the fishing fine down to 1.5 million, but ultimately still failed to pay, leading the Brazilian government to permanently take he and his brother's passports. Now, this was extra inconvenient as they wanted to take a holiday down to Paraguay, so they devised a genius plan. Create a fake Paraguay passport for one of Brazil's most famous people known for playing on the Brazilian national team. As he tried to enter Paraguay, Border Protection obviously noticed him instantly, placing Ronaldinho in jail awaiting trial. Imagine not only being one of the most famous footballers in the world, but also one of the most unique looking ones and trying to use a fake passport in South America. Bravo Ronnie, but wait, it still gets dumber. It is unclear why the former footballer entered Paraguay using the passport, considering Brazilians can enter the neighboring country using their national ID card. Basically, Ronaldinho could have gone to Paraguay without using a passport at all. To add a cherry on top of the cake, Ronaldinho claimed he didn't know the passport was fake and believed he had been given his Paraguayan passport as a gift, assuming it was an honorary type document of no real value and gave it to an official without thinking when he reached Paraguay because it was the first thing he got out of his bag. He was therefore even roasted by his own lawyer. Ronaldinho was 
wasn't aware that he was committing a crime because he didn't know they were fake documents. He's stupid, but the court didn't buy it for a second and Ronaldinho was jailed for almost half a year. Whilst inside, the prison hosted a futsal tournament, leading teams across the prison to row with one another, over which would have Ronaldinho on their team. He'd win the final game by scoring 11 goals, eventually leading a judge to conclude there is no indication that he has any personal characteristics or criminal behaviour that would put society at risk, and Ronaldinho was therefore released from prison with a $200,000 fine. However, he had no hope of paying this. In fact, the reason he and his brother initially had their passports seized was because an investigation into their bank accounts revealed a balance of just 24.63 Brazilian real, or $6.59. Ronaldinho's plan to rebuild his life was to launch a cryptocurrency, releasing the Ronaldinho Soccer Coin Project, which gained just 61 Instagram followers. With his own coin failing, Ronaldinho instead promoted other shady crypto projects, always being met with understandable critique. Is this a translation for you are bankrupt again? In case you forgot, here are all the crypto projects you pump and dumped over the years, only leading to even more problems. Ronaldinho denies part in alleged 61 million crypto scam at congressional hearing. His likeness had been used to promote a cryptocurrency, which promised a return of 2% per day. After the crypto inevitably turned out to be a scam, Ronaldinho was brought before the government, although he claimed he was never partnered with the company and it used his name and image without his authorization, arguing he was also a victim of the purported scheme. But Ronaldinho took this photo specifically for the company and also had a history of involvement in these kinds of shady projects. Additionally, Ronaldinho had failed to appear before two previous hearings related to the inquiry. He said weather conditions meant he was not able to attend. His involvement is up for interpretation, but it seems he was sufficiently rattled as he'd pivot to promoting traditional products where he'd only experience even more issues. Ronaldinho posted to his Instagram, this is a sad time for anyone who likes Brazilian soccer. It's hard to find the energy to watch the games. This is perhaps one of the worst teams in recent years. It has no respectable leaders, just average players for the most part. I've never seen a situation as bad as this. I repeat, our performance has been one of the worst things I have ever seen. It's a disgrace. The post was shared to Reddit and people weren't happy. Criticism is fine, but straight up quitting on the national team in an official post is something to say the least. Imagine your idol saying that about you and your teammates, killing their confidence. Well, only one day later, Ronaldinho returned to Instagram, revealing the nasty message was actually an ad. I would never abandon Brazilian football, never. And I would never say the things you saw. In fact, these words came from real Brazilian fans. They are real comments I saw on the internet. Guys, what our boys need is support at this time. That's why I joined Rexona in this movement. We are asking everyone to send messages of support. Hashtag Rexona does not abandon you. He's damn broke, isn't he? Ronaldinho's finances haven't been discussed recently, but judging by photos of him taking private jets, it seems he's rebuilt his life at least to some extent.